these things are fairly likely to flip over when the wind gets under them at high speed. They're not designed to be doing much more than 100 miles an hour. All right, we're All good. Right the front. So we're coming here just to confirm to ourselves that she's not going to take off. Straight back, straight back, straight back, straight back, straight back, straight back. Sound job. It makes me a little bit more nervous that somebody like Guy Martin is driving it. I don't want to be the man that killed Guy Martin. I mean, to be honest, if I ended up on my roof at 120 mile an hour, I'm not that bothered. But obviously, the risk assessment, it wouldn't go down so well, would it? What would the paperwork be? Onerous. Onerous? I don't know what that means. Anyway, there'd be a right lot of paperwork. It'd be coming out your lug, old man. The team are in Nuneaton at the world's oldest automotive wind tunnel. The Beetle is set on load cells, just sort of posh bathroom scales, right? When we get those fans up and running, it'll pull the air over the car, and we will know if the car's going to take off because the load will decrease on the load cells. But before they test the car... Go on, Dave, wick her up, man. Guy tests the tunnel. Give us some welly, let's have a full force. 250 kilowatts apiece, then, one megawatt. I see if I'm going to end up in them fans. I don't think so. What do you think? was a breeze. The test program can begin under the watchful eye of aero engineer Kevin Chow. Oh, it's moving about a bit. Nothing's flown off it yet. The, the mirrors are still on it. I'd call that a win. The live data from the wind tunnel scales reveals the worst. Go on, Kevin, what's it telling you? It's telling me that it needs a bit of work. <laughs> oh, really? Right. At 130 miles per hour, an invisible force of 200 kilograms is trying to pull the car off the road. 120 of that's on the rear, 79 of it's on the front. It's uh, not the most desirable characteristic in a car. So you're saying it makes a good aeroplane but not a good car? Yeah, yeah, that's one way of putting it, yeah. Put the smoke over it, see what it looks like. The smoke trail shows how air interacts with the car and reveals where the problem is. You can really see that the smoke attaches itself like glue to the rear window and boot area, and yeah. that's what we want to try and avoid, yeah? Yeah, because basically, as the air flows over the back of the vehicle, the act of pulling that air down also imparts an equal and opposite force on the vehicle, sort of like pulling it up. Yeah. So that's where all of the rear lift is coming from. So in order to reduce the rear lift, what we need to do is that we actually need to separate the air so that it doesn't stay attached over the rear of the vehicle. The team sets to work improvising a spoiler. Ah, so called because it should spoil the air flowing over the back of the car. Yeah, it's not the finished product, but it'll just point us in the right direction. It'll just give us a bit of a, a bit of a cue. That's not going to fall off in a breeze. They also try to reduce lift by fitting a front spoiler. So this goes above, like that. So the way that works is that you're essentially reducing the amount of air that goes underneath the car. So instead of going under, it basically goes sideways around the vehicle. Right, let, let's get some numbers again. Sound job. Right, strike her up again. The target figure here is something less than 200 kilograms of lift. What's the damage? What's the damage? Oh. oh, there you go. <laughs> the spoilers seem to work. The lift that was 200 kilograms at the start of the day is reduced to just over 100 by the end. It's a lot. It's a mate. It's a bloody That's a lot, isn't it? Happy with that, mate. I think the main conclusion from today is we know it's not going to flip onto its roof at 140 odd miles an hour. Pretty much, yeah. Your insurers are happy. You're happy. Jobs a peach. <laughs> <laughs>